the live program a little bit premature tonight, but it's, we've got an extra 10 minutes. We needed it. We tried to get a little bit longer because uh, we've got such an important guest tonight. Um, stay tuned. We're going to try and open the phone lines, but there's no guarantee on that because it all depends on how much of the testimony we can get through. Now, going straight to Wally Chuibat, who's uh, really come from hate to love, or from terrorist to lover of Zion. It's quite appropriate that we came in on the back of that piece of music. Uh, welcome to the program. Thank you, Howard. I'm pleased to be here. You know, this is, uh, it's quite a testimony that you have to tell. I've only just heard snippets of it, and I really want to lose no time. You know, how come you, from the time of 1993, something changed in your life to take you from such hatred that you had? You, you were saying, just as you were listening to the music there, you could not have stomached that. Be prior 1993. Yes, sir. I could not listen to uh, any Israeli music. I could not listen to Hatikfa, the closing of the Israeli channel. When I lived in Israel, it just, uh, like I was telling you, it was like putting holy water in the exorcist. You know, I just hated anything to do uh, with uh, Zionism. Uh, Zionism was Nazism the way I grew up. Uh, uh, Jesus being the son of God or be Jesus being crucified or, or gospel songs, I would instantly turn the radio on. It just uh, gave me the jitters because I just really hated uh, everything that uh, Judeo Christianity stands for. Why? Tell us you, I'm saying why because obviously it'll give leeway to be able to give well, some the, of the Islam background. that I grew up with. You know, mm -hmm. I, I can. You know, I'm not here to say Islam is, is, is evil, bad religion, or not peaceful religion, or whatever. This is not my job. My job is to only say the Islam that I grew up with as a child, the Islam I grew up with in high school, the Islam that, that is being propagated throughout the Middle East. It is extremely anti-Semitic. Um, to put it in a nutshell, for the Western viewers, they can relate to Nazism, seeing footage of the Holocaust. Uh, in the same fashion, uh, the system robbed everything. The, the arts were robbed, just as Hitler robbed the arts. The school system was robbed, just like Hitler robbed the school system. The youth was robbed, just like the Boy Scouts. Uh, the music, the arts, everything was being robbed from us. Where we, got not, we, we heard nothing except Jew hatred. And then you have graffiti outside when you go out. As a child, you go out the house, outside the house, and you see graffiti all over the country. Everywhere is graffiti. And what kind of graffiti? We knock on the gates of heaven with the skulls of Jews, basically, to kill Jews. To die as a martyr was the way to live, to survive. And f right from kindergarten, yeah, I remember our first song in kindergarten. It was called, Arabs are beloved and Jews are dogs. This is something unimaginable in the West. But even if you go to your father and ask him to explain things to you, he supports the religious education, he supports the, uh, the school system, and socially, everything is supports that system. There's only one party line or the coffin in that system. So that's how I grew up with, basically. My mother, who was an American, she uh, happened to uh, move there, and she wanted nothing to do with Islamism. She wanted to leave back. She went for a visit, and she was captured, kind of uh, not allowed to leave. And she ended up there for almost 40 years against her will as an American. Uh, so that's why I always tell girls who are interested in marriage with somebody out of their faith, if you're a Christian girl, you know, watch out. Uh, talk to my mother. She can tell you the stories. At every place I speak, women come out and tell me about their problems marrying out of the faith, especially marrying a Muslim. Because in Islam, your children become automatically Muslim. Your daughter has to marry a Muslim male. And if she doesn't marry a Muslim, if my sister married a non-Muslim, it was my duty to kill her. And I would have thought nothing of it. But this is amazing. I mean, you're a Palestinian, right? Yes, am, I hearing, am I hearing straight? Yes. Okay, and yet you grew up with all of that, um, the education system that you say it robbed you because you know something different. Uh, can I say truth? Yes. Oh, thank you. Truth. From that which was uh, part of the, how can I say, the, the propaganda? Yes. Oh. Thank you. Uh, now that, uh, not to be trite about it, is what has helped to fuel um, the, the terrorism that we've, we see s daily on our television now. Yes. On the radical Muslim terrorist. Yes. Now, how do we, how, how come you changed? Can, it, does that give us hope that there are other p people out there that can also we have hope? We should always change? have hope, Howard. There's always hope. When you, when you have an avenue to see the truth, like what you have in your show, 
like what you're providing. People can see the truth. People can taste what Christianity is about, what the Bible is about, an avenue. And when I started reading the Bible in 1993, I was trying to convert my Catholic wife to Islam, as my father converted my mother to Islam. And uh, I told her, she said to me, well, why should I leave my traditional faith? Uh, I said to her, well, because the Jewish people, they corrupted the Bible. They're prophet killers. And she said, well, well, can you show me? You know, what do you mean? Can you show me the evidence? Can you show me some, some verses that are corrupted and, and things of that sort? So I said, well, that's a dilemma here. This, this lady is asking for evidence. Oops. So I had to go to the store and buy a $10 Bible, King James, and I read it from cover to cover. And before I started reading it, you know, and I had the Quran side by side with the Bible, and I, I did a prayer, you know, and I thought God is going to show me the, the problems in the Bible. And I said, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, please lead me to the truth. And I was really sincere about it. Please lead me to the truth. And I urge anybody who's viewing this to do the same prayer. Just ask the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to lead you to the truth. And guess what? He will do it. He made that promise. And I, I thought at first glance on the Quran, I could find the problems with the Bible and looking at the Bible, I find the corruptions. And I started from Genesis. And I started learning about the fall of man in Genesis. I, just, I understood the necessity for redemption, for which is the element that was missing in, in Islam. In Islam, uh, the, the Quran stated that God created us to test us. God to, to test human, humanity so that we will be tested. And yet in the Bible here, God created us perfect beings. Adam and Eve were, were perfect in the garden, yet they chose different avenue which caused them to sin, which was taken from the uh, tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So now they know evil. And that's how sin entered into man. And from that moment on, I started going on, you know, Exodus, everything, down to the prophets. And when I got to the prophets, I was shocked. That was around 1993. And tormenting my mother as a young teenager, uh, asking her, because I caught her one time looking at the Bible. And she said, I'm just looking at this as curiosity, you know. She didn't confess to me that she was a Christian. She reverted from Islam, because the punishment in Islam, if you, whoever leaves his faith, kill him. That's what the hadith Hadith. says. Yes, it was a problem for my mother. She had to live a silent life. And then she said, yes, I said, I, said, I just want to know if there will be a Palestinian state according to the Bible. And she said, yes, there will be a Palestinian state. Because in Joel chapter 3, it talks about the division of the land of Israel. She didn't say anything else. She didn't tell me it was going to be judgment. Mm. So I read that part. It says that God will come down, judge the nations for what they have did to Israel. Oh. For they have this scattered a shock at this time. Huh? Was this a shock for you? Extremely shock for what is scattered my people and divided my land, you know. And not only that, I was shocked with thousands of verses. I mean, literally thousands. The Bible has eight thousand three hundred and fifty-two verses of prophetic nature. I ran into Psalm eighty-three, Amos nine, and Amos nine verse fifteen. It says, "I will put them in their land, and no longer shall they be pulled out of that land." Wow. And indeed, we tried. I lived the Six Days War. I remember the Six Days War. It was a parallel to Joshua. Joshua had a Six Days War, which established the state of Israel the first time. So I begin to learn that the state of Israel was a, was a godly commandment, godly requirement. He ordained it. But I couldn't believe that how could God ordain an evil state like Israel? Because in my view, Israel was an evil state. It was an apartheid. It was an occupation, you see? And, and that's then, what is fed out in the media. That's what so many people in this country believe. Yes. Or even the West. And that's even what I Christians. believe. That's what I believed as well. Until I started to divorce my uh, uh, prejudiced uh, loyalties. You know, the traditional loyalties that's, that's, that's so strong. Uh, let's ask a question. If, if you know, in, in Germany, during the Nazi time, how many Germans were against the Jews? And was it an issue of occupation? Was it an issue of apartheid? Yeah. What was the issue? What caused the Holocaust? Is it, is it an issue of truth? If it was an issue of truth, or was it an issue of education? 
they're not, the, the, the Germans were one of the most educated people on earth. Good point. So why would over 90% of Germans support Adolf Hitler and support the Holocaust if it's an issue of education? It is not an issue of education. It is an issue of anti-Semitism. It's an issue of evil, of hatred towards this minority group called the Jews. Who are God's chosen people. That's his people, that the Messiah will come from them. You know, and then I ran into Psalm 83, which is an astonishing psalm. And people think this, it says on the title, the song of Asaf. I say, wow, this is not a song at all. And it says, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel be remembered no more. They form a confederacy against you. Wow, a confederacy of nations against Israel? And it names them by name, the tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites. Right. Edom has been Jordan, the Ishmaelites mm -hmm. has been the Arabs, the Hajarites as well. And it mentions Assyria came to the aid of Edom and Assyria is Iraq and Syria, in, and, it, and it talks about this battle that Israel will be victorious. And I bet you anything, when David was writing these words, he, he was probably shocked. Yeah. Whenever Assyria attacked Israel, or Babylonia attacked Israel, or Rome attacked Israel, Israel is doomed. Oh. Here is a confederacy of nations coming against Israel, and Israel is triumphant. And it says in verse 16, fill their faces with shame regarding the enemies, that they may seek your name, O Lord. And I had to stumble at that verse, they seek, they, they may seek your name, who, you know, who is the Lord. The, and it, it mentions it there in one of just about three places in, in the King James Version of the name Jehovah, funnily enough, in Psalm 83, 18. That's right, you know, that you, Jehovah, who's yeah. alone, you know. Is the most high. Is the most, yeah, over all the earth, and yeah. it's amazing. And then it talks about how the battle will be won. It says, pursue them with your tempest, and frighten them with your storm. And so when do you think that was prophetically fulfilled? 1967? Well, no, 67, that's only one fulfillment. It's going to continue on and on and on until the nations know and they're all that drawn. Israel's God is the true God. Amen. You see? Zechariah. And Zechariah, the same thing. Yeah. Zechariah 12 and 14. And what amazed me about Zechariah is he talked about the women being raped in Jerusalem. Now, here I was in high school, and my teacher, Naim Ayyad, the Islamic teacher, uh, talking to us about what would be the outcome after we defeated the Jews. Because in our Islamic theology that we learn, in the Hadith, the Prophet Muhammad says that the day of judgment shall not come to pass until the tribes of Islam defeat the tribes of Israel in Jerusalem and in the surrounding nations. And the trees and the stones will cry out, there is a Jew hiding behind me. Come, O Muslim, come, O slave of Allah, come and kill him. So we ask, what happens to these? We, you know, who do we kill? He said, we kill the man, we take the woman as concubine. And we asked about what do you mean by concubine? You know, you can have children with concubines, I learned from the teacher. And then I said, well, how could you have children if you're not married to them? Is it out of wedlock? He goes, no, it's not out of wedlock, and it's not marriage. I said, but it is marriage, but it's not marriage. I'm confused here. Teacher, is it consensual? And he says, it doesn't have to be. And I said, but teacher, is that rape? And he says, no, it's not. And there in Zechariah, it talks about the women in Jerusalem being ravished by the enemies that comes round about Israel. And it says the nations round about. If you want to know what happens, just look up the nations round about or the neighbors of Israel. So I started looking at the situation and examining the life I lived. Putting a bomb in the bank, trying to kill my first Jew, my cousin being a bomb maker, my other cousin dying on his way to plant a bomb in Ben Yehuda Street. And I started looking at these facts of what had happened. And I started realizing it's not an issue of land, it's not an issue of refugee problem, because the Jewish people have been the world's greatest refugee problem. It's the spirit anti Semitic. Exactly. It's the same spirit as Adolf Hitler. Because Umar ibn al Khattab, the Khalif of Islam, declared that a Jew must wear a yellow patch on his shoulder, exactly as was in Nazi Germany. A Jew must pay jizya or taxation, exactly as in Nazi Germany. A Jew must walk the alleyway, must not walk the main roads, exactly as in Nazi Germany. A Jew must live secluded, exactly as in ghettos in Nazi Germany. And then I started reading Matthew 25 and understanding I was naked and he didn't give me clothes. I was hungry, he didn't feed me. And there was no excuse for nobody during the 2,000 years of the diaspora not to have helped this refugee problem called the Jew. That's None of us. You should actually even turn it around, the refugee problem called the Jew, rather than the refugee situation being right. the Palestinians. That's I've, right. got, I've got to ask you this, yes, about me. Um, Mr. Walid, but it, just in case you've just joined in, because we did start the program ten minutes earlier, uh, it is live, and we are 
possibly going to take some phone calls right at the end of this. You're listening to Walid Shu about who is a Palestinian, and as he just this minute said, you were involved in terrorist acts. Is yes, that right? Sir. Against Israel. Yes, sir. How are your people dealing with this now? I mean, this is like going back on them. Yes, sir. And that's what I'm saying, you know. What about my freedom? What about your freedom? What about our freedom to express our views? Even if our views are wrong or stupid or incorrect or inaccurate, don't we have at least the right to express our views? You know, what happened right with my family, you know, my father said, you should be killed. My brother called and threatened my wife. And she was a shocked. She was shocked. She couldn't, she couldn't understand it. How could a person that came to our house ate from the same table and we were friends and all of a sudden calls her up and he says, we know where you're living. We know what you're doing against Islam, just as a threat that would come from any Islamist group. And we started feeling the persecution. And my, my land was taken away from me in Israel. And my family said, if you want your land back, you have to come back to Bethlehem court mm -hmm. and declare the shaharatan, which means come back to Islam. So I have no freedom of religion. Now I ask them, I say, family, please tell me, who's the land thief? Who steals the lands? You blame the Jews for stealing lands. Yet you steal my little land that I have. I have just a small little lot. Yet it's amazing because Yasser Arafat's uncle sold land to the Jews. Uh, Hajj Amin Hussein's father sold land to the Jews. Hajj Amin Hussein. Oh, no, obviously in the last to the Jewish years. National Fund. You know, uh, the mayors of Jerusalem sold land to the Jews. The most prominent Arab leaders sold land to the Jews. Which was forbidden. That's right. It was forbidden, but yet it was forbidden for others, but not for them. You see, my grandfather almost died because he sold land to the Jews. Well, there are Christians um, that I know in this country that uh, would be shocked by listening to what you're saying because their hearts are all right for justice. And they think that what's happened in, to the Palestinians is that Israel is an aggressor. I mean, that's what it comes across all the time, that they've gone in and occupied. And it seems to me that how can we um, deal with that uh, when Christians don't understand the role of Israel. If you would live in Nazi Germany and the media day in and day out bombarded you that the Jews are evildoers, the Jews are uh, all kinds of things, does it mean because everybody's reciting this, does it mean it's true? Like I always say, you know, Noah was right and the whole world drowned. Good so, point. So, you sound like my brother-in-law. He always used to say, just because the majority are in favor of it, right. it doesn't mean they're right. Majority doesn't mean truth. But that's the, what popular opinion is all about, and that's what seems to sway, and that's probably why the world's in a bit of a mess. It's because they miss the gaps of the pieces of facts that they, they, that they lose on. First of all, it was the Muslim and, and Islamic and Arabic pogroms by Hajj Amin al-Husseini that forced 800,000 Jews to leave from Islamic countries and to be forced to go to Israel. They were forced to go to Israel, and then you had a holocaust from the West. So from the East, the West, and from the North, from Russia, the pogroms. So that's why I asked my Palestinian friends, I said, excuse me, who created the state of Israel? They say, well, the Balfour Declaration. I said, no, it wasn't the Balfour Declaration, it was our hatred. You're guilty, I'm guilty, we're all guilty. Just exactly as everybody's guilty of killing Jesus. We are all guilty about Israel. Every single nation in the world is guilty about Israel. We forced the Jews to create a state, and these people didn't come with machine guns or military armada. They came empty-handed. They bought land, started villages. It was desolate. I remember my grandmother telling me all these things. My village, our village in Beit Sahur, it was owned by six families only, and my grandmother told me that land was empty. There was nobody here. People came and divided the land illegally. There was no legal division. You know, here the Arabs were allowed to go under the Ottoman Empire. Okay? The Jews were not allowed to immigrate to Israel. A Christian and Muslim can immigrate, can go. The Jews were not allowed. They didn't have the freedom to go. Their, their, even their tombstones in their grave sites was taken to build a, a latrine for the Jordanian army. They were persecuted. All these years they were persecuted. They were persecuted in Hebron. In, in Hebron, the enti almost the entire Jewish population got massacred way before the so-called occupation. So why were they massacring Jews this whole time before the occupation? Why were they massacring Jews in Libya, in Iraq, in Egypt, in, in, in Tunisia, all over the Middle East, in Iran? It's a revelation to you. Why? 
Huh? Why? Why would they be massacred? Yeah. Well, it's very simple. When I ran into this this verse that says Satan knew that his time is near, his very short time, he persecuted the woman, which brought the man child, the male child. Hello. It was obvious that the hatred was evil source that the world cannot comprehend right now. Mm. They need to probe into the scriptures to understand that evil. But you've just quoted Revelation 12. Yes, sir. Okay. A lot of Christians won't even go near that book because they think it's a book for fools. It's a it's, it's an amazing book. It gives you the guidelines. It gives you the, the outline of the different empires and nations that comes and the end time nation that come against it. Look, <clears throat> this is a question I ask every person to look into the Bible. Look into the Bible. <clears throat> every nation, every, 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 every country that comes against Israel, in the end, the God stops and curses that comes against Israel, every single one of them mentioned, today is Muslim. Today is Muslim country. And this is a warning to our Muslim brothers. Mm. You know, look at the names. Do we become fighters against God? Do we, we become, become fighters against, against God, we yes. actually think we're doing God a favor, the scripture says, in the end, That's they'll right. think they're doing God a favor by getting rid of the Jews. The ones who come to kill you will be thinking they're doing God a favor. And that's what I was. I was thinking I was doing God a favor. In fact, if you look at Psalm 81, before you look at Psalm 83, it says that the haters of the Lord pretend submission to Him. Th th that's in reverse. Mm -hmm. The hater, how could you hate God and, and be submitted to God? Because you pretend. That's right. And the word Islam means submission. So there's these people that hate, you know, and but I is this, is this all? Believers in Islam, you believe in your Absolutely opinion? not. Absolutely not. There's many, many good, peace, peaceful Muslims. Thank God. And they suffer as well. You know, they suffer persecution because they don't adhere to this Islamist agenda. The Afghan community, the Iranian community that hears. As a matter of fact, just today I was at, uh, with, 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 a, with a driver who was an Afghan, you know. And I instantly started talking to him and, and, and probably him and instantly he hates the fanatics. He can stand the fanatics. He wants to get rid of terrorism. He lives in England. He's glad to live in England. He's glad to live in the West. So it's not true. We need to vindicate the Muslims that have nothing to do with this. So let's be fair. Let's call truth, truth. I'm fascinated. I hope our viewers are too, because this is a very unusual interview. Wally, you paint the picture, uh, as I say, just to reiterate for those who are just joining us again, that Palestinian, brought up a Palestinian, and parents there lived in Bethlehem, right? Yes, sir. You now have an understanding of the history of Israel, and it's the, just in your own words, what do you understand uh, with regards to the land issue, just alone, I mean, because a lot of people think that Israel should give up right at this moment in time, much more land. I'd like to know your thoughts on that. And also, did you recognize from Scripture then that the Jews had the right to return? Or even if they probably were not even aware that this was prophesied, a lot of the Jews. That's right. And they're hit. Well, tell Every us. Jewish person I talk to doesn't understand, doesn't even comprehend what happened. And that's why even it says in, in Jeremiah, the day is coming, saith the Lord, that, 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 that the children of Israel will say that God who's brought the children of Israel, uh, not just out of the land of Egypt, but God who's brought the children of Israel out of all the lands where he has driven them. And you talk about a hundred different nations. Moses would be dancing with joy. And he would say, look, I had such a rough time to get my people out of Egypt alone. God had to part the Red Sea. You're telling me that God brought them out of a hundred different countries? He probably wouldn't even believe it. But it's exactly what Jeremiah predicted. Do you see it as a miracle? Absolutely a miracle. It's an absolutely a miracle. God is the God of miracles. That's why in Isaiah, he stated his, his, his roadmap. He says, as you see things happen, as you see them fulfilled, you know that I am the Lord. So that's why in only the Christian faith has faith defined as the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we have evidence. We have our roadmap and we have the world's roadmap. You've heard the term roadmap. Yeah, the Bible has a roadmap. It says regarding the vision of Israel or giving, creating a Palestinian state or giving land, Israel giving land would be disastrous for Israel. This is what I always what? say. Because the issue is not an issue of land. The hatred was way before this issue, first of all. Second of all, if the Palestinians need to have a land, how do we deal with the education system that's been going on for 40-some years, filled with hatred, the school system? 
day in and day out, the radios, the TVs, the propaganda, the graffiti, the religious Islamic sermon, the Rekrima Sabris, who is the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, day in and day out preaching the killing and hatred of Jews, and every single Islamic clergy in the mosques preaching the killing of Jews day in and day out. How do we... How do we, you know, how but do we... Surely this would bring peace. The Palestinians would be so you, you satisfied the, and happy. That's right. You give them, them fine, you give them more land, you bring the so-called refugee problem back, then we have double amounts of Palestinians with the same amount of hatred, with the same amount of sermons, you know, Saturday people first, Sunday people next. Why do they say this? Why does Arafat lead what's called Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade? Al-Aqsa is a religious term depicting the, the temple of Jerusalem and Jerusalem. Mosque. This is not a war over land, this is a war over Al-Aqsa, even though the Muslims control Al-Aqsa Mosque. Why do they want to kill the Jews? You see, because it is in the eschatology. The Islamic eschatology teaches that when, when Jesus comes, the Islamic Jesus comes, he will break the cross. He will kill the false Jesus who comes out of Jerusalem leading the Jews and the Christians. You notice the difference here. The Christian, the biblical anti-Messiah, have all of a sudden become the Islamist's Messiah. And the biblical Messiah has become the anti. The anti-Messiah. Do you think that'll work? Well, I mean the brain, uh, well, the, the persuasion. <laughs> the persuasion of understanding that that's what it will, it Christ, will play, it will Christ play along. Messiah will play. It will play along because as they're killing Jewish people, they say, you see, it's being fulfilled. As they get to the end, you see, and the, and the anti-Messiah is coming to Jerusalem to see, here's your Messiah, you see, and he's breaking crosses here and there, and they say, see, that's the man, until the tail end, which is, which is the defeat of the anti-Messiah, who comes from the north, you know, <clears throat> until his defeat, it'll be a wake-up call, <clears throat> and the Bible talks about the destruction of the armies that comes against Israel, and like, like I said, again, each nation that is mentioned is Islamic. Each nation that is mentioned is a Muslim nation that's coming against Israel. And the warning is there because it happened. We've had how many wars? Five wars against Israel? Why did we lose every single war? Interesting. If Allah was with us, why did we lose every single war? It, it can't be we lost every single war because Amos 9.15 stated very clearly, I will plant them in their land and no longer shall they be pulled out of that land. It's impossible to pluck the Jew out of the land of Israel. So is there a conflict between whose God is the true God? Yes, there is a conflict. There is a conflict in my view. Uh, <clears throat> the God of evidence versus... There's, if God is not love, he can't be God. You know, you could give him a different name. You could give him a different title. That's fine with me. But if he's not the God of love, if he doesn't say love your enemy, look at the log in your own eye before you look at the speck in your Jewish cousin. Mm -hmm. That's my God that tells me to look at the log in my eyes first. And if before. you hate your brother who you can see, it's right. how can you You have no faith. God? If you don't have love, you have no faith. Do you recognize that you are related to your Jewish brother? Do you recognize that from scripture and yes. the lineage? How, how, do you, how, how does that sit with you? We become sort of spiritual Jews, if you will, you know? Because we identify as part of Israel, as we are uh, the root, and it, it, Israel is the root. We are being part of this, this tree. And uh, we go celebrate the Feast of Tabernacle once a year, you know, and we simply nice. want to be uh, pilgrims to that land. We love that land. We don't want to take that land. That land belongs to these people. Uh, <clears throat> yes, Arafat never declared Judea as part of Palestine until after the Six Days War. If indeed, if it's an issue of, uh, to answer your question, if it's an issue of land, why didn't Yasser Arafat and the Palestinians include Judea, part of the covenant, until 1967? Mm. It never was. It was part right. of King Hussein who occupied it. Uh -huh. Israel liberated it from King Hussein. Mm. King Hussein occupied it. He, the occupier, you see, King Hussein, is really now the liberator? No, Israel liberated the lands. It took down the wall. Now they're crying about the wall. Israel didn't, doesn't want any walls. Israel wants peace. And I never understood that the Jewish people, and I begin to understand them now, they value life more than any people on earth. This is why I tell my Christian brothers. Because they don't go looking to kill others they on don't. purpose. I mean, they defend themselves. I mean, how do you, how do you understand 
what is happening and what has happened when you see children depicted on, on the television as being as throwing stones. That's all they have, they say. That's all their weapon is against the Israeli tank. Well, they have C4 explosives. Just the other day, there was 100 uh, kilos of C4s exploding on seven Israeli soldiers. They go into buses and commit suicide while they kill themselves. Why do they kill themselves? That's a good question. My aunt, Shahid, uh, after my cousin got killed, yeah, Shahid, uh, she passed around candy in the village. And uh, you know why she passed candy? Because it's really a selfish reason why they let their kids die and allow 70 members of the family to go to heaven. Of course, she's going to pick the mom and dad first because there is no assurance of salvation in that faith. You see, the assurance of salvation is to kill yourself, to make your body as a sacrifice, literally as a shaheed, in order to go to heaven. In accordance with the Quran, when it says, Do not think that the ones who die in the cause of Allah are dead, but are living with Allah, receiving his blessing. What blessing? The virgins and all these things. That's what they have in their mind. They use sexual enticement for teenage kids. Mm. So to go to heaven and giving your life, there has been a life, Howard, that's been given for all mankind. Amen. You Jesus know? Christ. Yes. And it, Jesus says, whoever seeks to uh, lose his life will gain it. Whosoever seeks to gain his life will lose it. And that could be twisted. But that is twisted in the Palestinian mm -hmm. media where they say, lose your life so you can gain it. And they mean it literally. Lose your life as a suicide bomber. That's a shame. You but know, that's taking somebody else's life, which is forbidden. Did you, you notice even a distinct Even Islam forbids difference? the taking of one's life. Yeah, I've read that in the it's Quran, but I can't understand why they do it today. Well, you see, they I'm come with this fatwas. They come with this, uh, uh, what they call ishtihad. Ishtihad means additional jurisprudence if something is not mentioned. If it's a special situation that the so-called scholars might give an opinion about. And all these scholars came out in Palestine and elsewhere in the Middle East saying, yeah, suicide bombing is okay. So uh, it became a fatwa, it became part of the legislation in the Palestinian. But not all Muslims agree with that. You know. As a Palestinian, former Palestinian terrorist as well, yes, sir. can I ask you the, the truth about you, the use of children? Yes. I can never understand this as a father and, and someone who lives in the West and we have social services that would be on our necks if we were to abuse our children in any way. And to, to place them in the firing line was that part, is that part of the propaganda and, the, and to, to gain sympathy? You see, the West thinks in this fashion. It says, since there are kids throwing stones, so there has to be a cause. You see, since there is an issue of bombing buses, there's a reason why people are angry. People kill for a reason. People are angry for a reason. And whatever reason they're explaining must be true. Well, we can ask the same question. That means, if this is true, if this way of thinking is true, then Adolf Hitler was right. Because he was killing Jews, so he must have had a reason to kill Jews, so his reason is legitimate. This is why Mein Kampf is one of the best sellers in Palestine. Mm. But you see, people's opinions of Hitler might be changing today when they look at the Palestinian Israeli situation. You know, I mean, it's a bit of a dangerous world out there. Look at what's happening in France yes. and uh, Middle Europe. You know, that's now starting to become very anti Semitic. We need to save the West. It is our job to save the West, your job, my job, and every person who lives in the West who appreciates the freedoms that we have, who appreciates the freedom of this society that opens its doors for us to come, work, and live. Yes, there's sin in the West. Yes, but there's hidden sin in the Islamic world as well. Mm. You know? There's sin everywhere. There's well, sin nobody, everywhere. Nobody's perfect. But thank God that we, if we come to terms with it and we recognize yeah. it, but we also need to recognize it in our fellow men. Yeah. And that, and how, how can we ever bridge this uh, hatred for one another that is growing? I mean, it's, it's been all throughout history. People say you can never change it. And religion, they will say, yes. is, the, is the instigator of all this. is the cause of it. Yes. Because we get so... We, we will bridge it. it, I believe. I believe education. That's why I will say, mediocre minds are no match to professional deception. Let me say it again. Mediocre minds are no match to professional deception. That's what's happening. That's what Hitler did, professional deception. That is what is, being go, is going on in 55 Islamic states by the Islamists who's trying to rape these, rob these Islamic countries and change them to fundamentalists. They're using professional deception. Can I say then, yeah. were you professionally deceived as a 
Palestinian terrorists. I was both. I was professionally deceiving and being deceived at the same time. You know, it's interesting that you ask that question. It's, we believed our pathological lies. You know, we made up the lies and we believed them. Myths, like we were the original Philistines. We were, Hitler says, we, the Germans were the original uh, Aryan yes. people. You know, Ariana was Iran and, 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 and Afghanistan. He had nothing to do with it. And here we are thinking we're original Philistines. This is a fabricated thing. Yet, you see Yasser Arafat saying it. You see educated people like Hanan Ashrawi saying it. You see Faisal Husseini before he died saying it. See, we're not the original Philistines. How could we be the original Philistines and the Canaanites? These people were of a Hamitic origin. We consider ourselves Semitic Arabs. That's right. From Ishmael? Yes. Mm -hmm. So here the history is being fabricated. Mm -hmm. We need to fight fabrication. We need to speak the truth. I go to, even to, the, to, the, to, the, to, to museums here. I go to archaeological museum and I see the, the fabrication in the archaeology world itself. Give us an example. Well, we went to the British Museum uh, uh, in, a, in a whole section where archaeology was from Israel. They try to say the, the Habirus, the, 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 Hebrew, the, 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 the Hebrews. It talks about the Habirus being Canaanites who came and settled on the land. And I said, wait a minute, this is a historic Whoa. fabrication right at the heart of England. So you can't even trust the The Hebrews history. are from the lineage of Abraham, are of Semitic origin, just like the Arabs, you know. And, uh, and Israel was totally, I mean, like wiped out of the whole section. No mention of Judea, no mention of, you know, it's trying to hide something. Why are we so ashamed of the Jews? Good question. What, going back also to education in your school system and the books that have now, uh, you know, that's quite widely known amongst uh, some people that the, that the children are being brainwashed into another way of thinking but you know some of that is creeping into our school books here apparently yes you know so uh, that Palestine uh, and it's not Israel they keep referring to everything but Israel no recognition of it at all and yet the UN was the one who even brought that about today the world's trying to say why don't you ab abide by the UN rules for the, you know what's happening in Iraq before the war and everything else but when it comes to Israel and the UN sanctioned that I mean, that's why all countries, the downfall of all the countries that hated Israel and hated the Jewish people is evidence. Germany Nazi party doesn't exist anymore. There's no Nazi party anymore. Germany was ransacked because of what they did to the Jewish people. That's why it says in the Bible, you can agree to disagree with the Bible. You can be an atheist. But one thing you cannot deny is that the Bible perfectly guessed everything. It perfectly guessed all these things. You have to at least give it the credit of being the perfect guesser. It says, if I bless them who bless you, I'll curse them who curse you, regarding Abraham and his seed from Isaac. You know, every single nation that uh, started cursing Israel has been uh, suffering and struggling a lot. And uh, uh, it's a warning to the world. Uh, well, Israel, Israel has been a blessing to the West. I mean, 90% of the citrus fruit that, the, that Europe gets comes from Israel. Israel planted that land like it's never been planted before. They irrigated it, they fixed it up, and just when they fixed it up, everybody got jealous, you know. They kill, if they kill Sheikh Ahmed Yassin, the whole world is angry at Israel. Like, if we kill Osama bin Laden, nobody will shed a tear. Yet if Israel kills Osama bin Laden, it's a big major problem. Everybody's objecting. Could it be that there is anti-Semitism in the West? Of course there's anti-Semitism in the West. It's still live and well in the West. It's live and well. It's been live and well for thousands of years. Nothing changed. We're all guilty of anti-Semitism. I'm fascinated to know, really, do you think anti-Semitism, in your, your view, is in the church? Oh, heavy in the church as well, yes. Replacement theology. And now we have what is called the theology of liberation, where the Bible is liberated not just from Israel, but from all the miraculous things, from the, from, from the beautiful things that the Bible has. Uh, I, as, as a matter of fact, I went to, to Christian school in third and fourth grade in uh, the West Bank in Bethlehem. And what I learned there was replacement theology. I ran even into uh, Emil Salaita, who was the president of the Patriarchate Schools of Palestine. I ran into him and I said to him, excuse me, you know, I learned in your schools all these things. I came to confront you. And he says, why, you support Israel? I said, of course I support Israel. What do you think we should do with Israel? And I was interviewing him on tape. And he said, Israel should be eliminated. So I asked him, I said, by putting bombs in buses. He said, by whatever means, it should be eliminated. I said, sir, you were a lapel. 
How could you use such language? Mm -hmm. How could you say such things? But this must have spoken to your heart about the difference between those who follow the Bible. Yes. See, but I knew it all. I knew all these things because I lived it. I was part of that culture of hate. I was part of that culture of death that taught me to kill Jews as a way of salvation. That's evil. You know, it's time to denounce it. How can we help to educate? Or how could you do it? I know you're on this program, and, but are there others like you that are having this revelation? <laughs> Very few. Very few. And God doesn't work by the multitudes and the many. Uh, <clears throat> we go to the universities. We speak at the universities. Uh, we speak at uh, all over church circles. I win churches, you know, thank God now 2,000 members support Israel. In fact, they want to support a settlement. What's wrong with supporting an Israeli settlement? Well, what's wrong with supporting the Jewish people who are living there, coming from all over the world hungry? When you go to the university, particularly because it, it's getting to the young people that is very important to change minds, it's very hard to do that uh, with the older generation, including myself in that, is that what's the best way uh, or, or let me ask you what, did the, what sort of questions do they ask you I mean they might you know these must be pretty picky questions most of the questions they ask me I mean, the, uh, on the radio or mostly in, in, in a lot of the universities they doubt is are you really who you are that's what I was you thinking know? a few minutes ago and last time two days ago uh, one guy says you're an Israeli that's you know I, honestly you're I was imposter. thinking the same yeah thought. you're an imposter you're an Israeli mm. I said sir I bet you $120,000. I'll prove my identity, that I'll collect $120,000 from you after I prove it. You'll pay me $120,000 to prove that I am who I am. Would you be willing to make the bet? He says, no. I said, then why would you accuse me of being an imposter? Why would you make such an accusation? If you're 100% sure of it, you would make that bet in an instant. Of course you would, yeah. And he didn't. You see, he knew he was lying himself. Other questions you're asked? young people thinking how can this be uh, you know good question that he put most of the questions regarding uh, is, 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 the, is, is, is the lack of understanding of the history of Israel because that's been gone you see all the fabrication that's been going on all the time they are startled could this be true what you're saying here uh, a lot of the questions regarding the land regarding the Palestinian rights regarding the Palestinian state establishing a Palestinian state uh, a lot of them are skeptic they, they don't believe what I'm telling them. And I said, if you want to, how can we believe what you're telling us? You know, I say, okay, I have a simple proposition to you. Put a keeper on and go to the streets of Ramallah and see how long you will live. Now, you're not a Zionist, you're just a Jewish worshiper. Go put a keeper on, go to uh, Shechem and go try to pray in Joseph's tomb and go to the Palestinian neighborhoods and see how long you will live. That will be the litmus test to show you that is not an issue that is an issue of land or Zionism or any of that sort. Because Joseph's tomb, and we talk about the Joseph's tomb, got burned, got desecrated, got, you know, all the Torah scrolls, they peed on it. I mean, it was things that are horrific that they did. They painted it green, declared it as a mosque. You see, 16 holy places in Israel got desecrated. When did Israel ever desecrate an Islamic holy place, a Christian holy place? They have total respect for all religions. And for life, as you said earlier. And for life. Mm. That's why they even allow the Muslims to worship in the Temple Mount. Can I ask you this? Because this only happened recently, and, and, and I must say, as much as I understand from history uh, about Israel and, and the situation, I cannot and could not understand that the, the woman's life was taken with her four children the other day. Um, as you know why women why women and children you know what, what what's wrong with men going to fight men like we used to in the old days I asked that question to my cousin when he stood up one time in front of the TV when he saw Adolf Hitler and he saluted saluted Adolf Hitler I said excuse me why would you salute, salute Adolf Hitler he killed children he didn't kill Jewish adults only but he killed Jewish children and his answer astonished me it shouldn't have astonished me because I was one of them he says, because these children are the future soldiers of Israel, they also must die. How can you beat that sort of mindset? You can't. You can't reason with terrorism. You can only beat terrorism. You can only destroy terrorism. It's evil. How? You use the word destroy. How do you destroy by, it? By and waking yet remain up the West. England needs to wake up, as America is trying to help in destroy, destroying terrorism. The West needs to, the EU needs to wake up. 
and go full throttle, say there's no room for terrorism in the world. Go to the source of terrorism. Go to the Abu Sayyafs of the world in the Philippines. Get rid of this entity. Go to the Hezbollahs and get rid of this entity. Go to Hamas and get rid of it. Go to you know, all these jihadists. You've got to defang fanatic Islam from jihad. You can't let it go like that because it will destroy you. It will destroy the fabric of your nation. You have a duty for your children and your children's children. And it's on your neck. That is your duty as an Englishman for your children, as a mother, for your children, not to allow this brainwash to come to this country, and it will. Because if you look at every Judeo-Christian country that, that undermined its spiritual values, have lost to the Islamist. Syria was a Christian country. Even Saudi Arabia was Christian in some ways. Uh, Lebanon is a Christian country. It's gone to Hezbollah predominantly. You know, uh, Egypt was a Christian country. What happened? Turkey was a Christian country. The seven churches were in Turkey. Every single country that lost its heritage have lost to one group, and that's the Islamist. So what's going to happen to Britain? All right, before you answer that, think about it. Do you think that America then has been so great, and whereas England and Great Britain was so great, is because we have acquiesced and given up on our support outwardly for Israel? Yes. That was a short answer. It's a short sure answer. We have given up, Britain have given up Israel. And here's a good example. The United States blesses Israel. The United States is blessed. Blessed with everything. They got the jobs, they got the, you know... The economy. The economy, the they got oil, the beautiful... Even though they don't think it. Yes. I'm afraid to walk in the streets of England, you know? So am I. Yes. When we're moving. You know... No, what? it's all right. You actually live somewhere else, but... Yeah, I mean, the United States, yeah. you know? How does it feel? How does it feel to live, you know, uh, in a country that you are afraid to speak, you're afraid to walk the streets, you're afraid to express your opinions? This is not the England of the Balfour. You know, Balfour and, and, and Chaim Weizmann, they created the state of Israel. Balfour was a Christian Zionist, and Chaim Weizmann was a Jew. They got together, and God used them to create a state of Israel. Reminds me of Leon Uris's Exodus. There was a, a group of um, Arabs that were living there in, in the north. I can't remember the, the, the town. But they were so helpful to Israel. Recognized that these people were coming back. They were traveling from Russia, walking over all the, the, the mountains and everything to get there. Got there and were helped by their, their Arab brothers. I call them Arab brothers. Yes, yes. But they had such a hard time with the rest of the Arab nations and were even, even losing their lives for, for allowing Israel to really, or the, the Jews to return at that yes, time. Yes. Was, is, is that a true picture of what was happening then from a, a family's point of view or history? Uh, I, I lost the point. Leon Uris's the picture of the way that the, the Jews are returning, you know, before obviously 1948. Yes. Um, and there, trail uh, uh, of hardship getting back and coming over into that particular the northern part of, it, uh, of Israel they were helped by the Arabs yes and a certain Arab group I can't remember the name of them yes you have the Druze who stand, yes. who stand with Israel the Druze have yes. been great friends of Israel as a matter of fact my grandfather was yeah. friends with Israel many Arabs were friends with Israel many Arabs didn't hate the Jewish people coming to that land it's the, it, it, it's, the few, yes, it's, it's the few landowners who got jealous because they had what they called was, was called the peasants the fallahin and these people were given loans never to be able to pay these loans you see, then they, they saw that there's no ability for them to pay their loans. Israel and the Jewish settlements were providing medical care, real salaries. So they moved over there, started working for the Israeli, for the Jewish settlements, and they got jealous. So they started this, this hatred and this war and this battle. But many Arabs had no problem with the Jewish people. Did you know my father was saved by a Jewish doctor? Uh, my cousin, who's a Hamas activist, he, taught, he teaches Islamic theology in Jerusalem. He was saved. He was drowning in the Mediterranean Sea, saved by a Jew. While two of his classmates died while they're trying to save him, Muslims tried to save him. They both died. He was saved by a Jew. You see, and and and, and the I press asked, doesn't print this sort of stuff. That's though, right. And I yeah. asked my father. I said, Father, have you prayed for your Jewish doctor who saved your life? He says, I can't pray for him. I have to curse him. Can you imagine? Mm. So why do you think, really, that we as Christian believers should support Israel right now, giving your background? Israel is a democracy. 
It's a democracy. It's a beacon of light in the Middle East, a beacon for democracy, mm -hmm. a beacon for freedom, a beacon for prosperity. It's became such a wonderful industrial country, planted the land, you know. We could learn from Israel, and our Arab friends could learn from Israel. Sometimes we have to apply tough love, as we do, you know. We have to apply tough love, say, no, you're wrong, you know. And we need to support Israel, because it's, it's, it really, it came to be as a light to the nations. And indeed it is, but we are blinded to this, because we only see what is being told to us. You know, I have spent years researching Jewish songs. Can you imagine such a thing? Okay. Researching Jewish songs. Because all my life I learned the Palestinian songs. Searching Jewish songs. Because all my life I learned the Palestinian songs, the Palestinian revolutionary songs that taught to hate, kill, and blow up. You know, I come in the name of death. That's the song we sang. I come in the name of death. Your blood is kosher to us. That was another song. Damkum halali alayna. I searched the songs, the Jewish songs. I couldn't find one single song that had the words kill, war. I finally found one song that had the word war in it. So I went running to my Jewish friend and said, excuse me, What's this? there is a song that has war. I said, sorry to bust your bubble. The song says, and man will not learn war any longer right. from Isaiah. Yes. I said, shocking. Yes. This is shocking. Here's a people that everything about them is about life, the value of life. That's why Golda Meir says, we can forgive the Arabs for killing our children. We can't forgive them for making us kill their children. Wow, powerful you know, statement. That's this people. Is this the people that is so evil? If Zionism was so evil, that's why I pray every day. May God bless me with it, and may I never recover. <laughs> Waleed, you're an unbelievable character. I mean, I have to, I, I, I want to do what that student asked you and say, are you for real? You know, you really are who you are. For those who are just joining us, you know, we've got 15 minutes to, left. I think it would be, all right to open up the phone lines? No problem. Give us a call on 0207-631-4446. 0207-631-4446. Make your question really short, succinct, and we'll get as many in as we can. Um, and uh, God bless you. If, you. if it is a revelation to you, uh, don't, don't be afraid. If you disagree even with what Wally is saying, you want to come at him, do. So please don't ring up and just say, oh, this is wonderful, lovely, da-da-da. Let's have a real question tonight whilst there's time. 0207 631 4446. Whilst we're waiting for a call, Zechariah 8 through 14 mm -hmm. talks about what's going to happen in the end and that yet we, how can there be a peace? We as, as Bible believers understand there cannot be a peace agreement that's going to work uh, is because the actually fight all the nations come against Israel in the end. Is the Islamic uh, situation in the world going to help to bring those nations against Israel and Jerusalem? Yes, they will, because as I mentioned to you, every single nation mentioned in scripture is Islamic. I had one challenge one time. He says, wait a minute, what about Ethiopia? Ethiopia is mentioned in Ezekiel 38 that is not Muslim, it's a Christian country. I says, please read the Hebrew. The Hebrew says Kush. Kush was the son of Ham. Mm -hmm. And if you look up Kush in the Bible dictionary, it says the land south of Egypt. And what is south of Egypt? Sudan. Killed over a million Christians in Sudan. Yet the whole world never said anything. Why was the world so silent regarding Sudan? You know, if it's not anti-Semitism, we only pick on Israel, you know. How come we never picked on Sudan? So that's why I say the end, as Zechariah says, the neighboring countries the surrounding nations, and what are the nations that surround Israel today? Islamic, Islamic nations, they're going to turn fundamentalist. Which ones they are, who they are, we don't know. If they're all of them or not all of them, we don't know. Uh, so, and, and we look at Ezekiel, Ezekiel 38, it talks about, you know, Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and that's a Turkic nations coming against Israel as well in the north. You have the CIS nations that divorced itself from Russia. These are all Islamic exactly. nations. You know, so it, it, the problem is going to be huge. Mm. We've got a call, our first call on the line. You've been waiting very patiently, Yvonne, from Liverpool. Welcome to the program. Hello, Howard. Hello, good evening. Um, I'd just like to say this is the most powerful thing that I've, I mean, I listen to the news and, you know, so on, and I read the Bible, but this, this has just amazed me tonight because it's, it, 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 he, 
Wally's really opened my eyes and the things that I didn't understand, I now understand. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm just absolutely shocked and amazed. Well, take the opportunity, Yvonne, ask a question that you probably, you know, wanted to ask uh, someone at some stage about what's happening over th what was happening over there that you had a misunderstanding about? Well, it's not so much a misunderstanding. It's, you know, you see things on the news and then you, you start wondering, oh, you know, have the Palestinians got a point? But then you don't... This man, sorry, Wally, has just sort of let the cat out the bag as far as I'm concerned. Okay. You know, totally. And I, I am shocked. Well, Yvonne, thank you for sharing that comment with us, and uh, we hope that there are many others that are shocked for the right reasons. And uh, it's a matter of truth, I suppose, really. And what is truth? There's always an interpretation to that. Uh, thank you, Yvonne. We're sorry to lose you so it's quickly. Encouraging, though. Mm. I like it this calls too. Yeah. And uh, the next caller, please. As soon as you you've got them on the line. Hello. Zelda. Hi, Zelda. Good evening, Zelda. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Let's make good use of the time. Ask uh, Walid uh, your question, please. Yeah, uh, I'm asking if, if that man uh, who is on the te te television, is it Shubat? Shubat, the, yes. the one who is, who is on the television, is that, is that Christian? Yes, I'm Christian. You are Christian? Yes, it should have been obvious from the show. A born again Christian? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. That's what I, I wanted to know. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Bye. Okay, Zelda. Bye. 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 Obviously, probably a bit of a shock there to Zelda. Uh, for one reason or another, but you know, God is in the business of changing hearts and minds, and the Bible is uh, such a book that will do that. But through the Holy Spirit, it uh, convicts, it turns our what is been our education from the past uh, to something that will help us for the future to be in line with God. It's His will that will be done, not ours. And good evening, Sean. Sean from Wales. Good evening to you, Howard. Welcome, brother. Shalom. Shalom. Um, I would like to ask our dear brother Wally now. How is it possible that the spiritual leaders of the fundamentalists, Islamic fundamentalists, are allowed to get away with such horrible lies and um, mysteries they make up for these young men to fantasize about? Why can't they, can't the nations, Islamic nations, bring these men to accountability so that these uh, foul true untruth, you know, about going to heaven and what they offer there. It's it's not in the Quran. So why should they be allowed these men, clerics? I'm not sure the, the terminology here, however, but why can't they be pressurised to declare that this is all lies and therefore perhaps the the bombers will then uh, cease from their activities and not see the the, the this silly grandeur that's been put in front of them. Yeah. That's roughly my question. Okay, thank you, Sean. If you'd listen off air so we can get some others on. Good question as well. Nazism was easier to respond than what we have now, because Nazism was a system that was not a religion. This is now with a religious twist. It has a religious facade to it. Mm -hmm. It is very difficult for people to get up, or, or, or governments to get up, and start criticizing, you know, because it says, well, you're criticizing Islam. You know, and not only that, you have to understand the nature of anti-Messiah. He changes times and laws. And it's very basic, changing times and laws. What does it mean? Change the calendar system. Change the legal system. He does not honor the, what, the desire of women. What does that mean? He doesn't honor what women desires. Women's rights don't mean nothing. Who's changing laws to Sharia in the world today? Who's attempting to change Sharia to Sharia law? Changing the calendar from Anno Domini, the year of our Lord, to after the Hijrah? Why change the Anno Domini? Why the year of our Lord has to be changed? And why women's rights don't count anymore? Even in 55 Muslim states, still they have a problem with women's rights. And they're trying to invoke Sharia law on the West. Excuse me, I think we need to re-study what it says in the text regarding this issue, that there's a big problem here. Uh, <clears throat> You know, I can, I, can, I can go through the scripture and I can give four hour seminar just to show, to answer that very question he asked. It takes really four hours to answer it. It's such a long time to go through the verses. But there is an answer. Steve, thank you for holding on there. I think from North Hampshire? 
Yeah, that's right. Hi, Howard. How are you doing? I'm okay. Um, well, my question was, was um, I wanted to know um, about the Jewish people, because I have a great love for them, because um, we both love the same gods. But what I wanted to know was, why are the Muslims, you know, because out of all the religions, Howard, like you've got, you know, the, the Buddhists and everything else, the Islamic people don't seem to be too, the Muslim people don't seem to be too bothered, you know, with, with them. Why are they oppressing the, the Jewish people so much, you know? And, and why, are they, why are they attacking our holy lands? Okay, well, uh, I'll let, obviously, Walid answer that, but obviously this is not all Muslim people, you know, let's, let's be clear about that as we spoke earlier. But good question, and, and if you'd listen off air so we can get another caller on, thank you. Well, basically, it's, I think it's a showdown. They have, uh, they have an, uh, what they think is an oil wealth that is going to uh, depreciate within 50 madrasas from Saudi Arabia. Uh, so, and they believe in Islam to the world, the Islamists. Uh, it is an agenda to take over the West. And literally, if you can think of it, it's really simply jealousy. You know, there's this element of jealousy to see the West prosper, to see, to see uh, a, a beautiful country like this. They want something like it and they want to take it over. Uh, it's the same question. Why did the Islamists take over a long time ago in the Futuhat al Islamiyya, in the, uh, taking over countries in, in the Middle East? It's the same question happening again. So, uh, plus it's in scripture, you know, there's good against evil, evil against good. If you don't understand good against evil, you need to look at the Bible, it gives it to you clearly. And this is the element of good versus evil. But obviously that could be turned around the other way. This is what they would say uh, of another religion, any other religion, that what we worship is what we don't know and that what we have is wrong. Uh, this is what I'm saying, truth is, is up to, uh, in the eye of the beholder, to some degree, is it or is it not? Because we have a God who wrote everything down in, in his word, which is the Bible. But we've got Bill from Scotland. And before I ask Bill to just, let me just ask you for the next few minutes, please, uh, let's open up the lines for people who don't agree with Wally, don't agree with the understanding that he's uh, come to in the last, uh, well, since 1993. Uh, Palestinian and a terrorist, former terrorist, who is now believing that God's word is the truth, and particularly with regards to Israel in the last days. Okay, Bill. Yes. Sorry to have kept you. Yes. You're, th you're through to the program? So when do I do, do, do I turn my TV right down? Yes, if you would, please, Bill. Yeah, right. otherwise there'll be a delay. Yeah. Okay. And your question? Yes, well, I've got this dreadful eczema in my skin. It's all over my face, my arms, and my body. And I'm absolutely burning with it. And uh, I've had hands laid on me by uh, a, a dear a Christian brother and many others. And I just, I know the Lord can heal me. And I'm just striving with this. Maybe I shouldn't, but that's, it's just driving me nuts. Hello? Yeah, not related to the, the subject matter, but in Jesus Christ's name of Nazareth, we pray right now that Bill will be healed and that will be instant. And we ask for the Holy Spirit to come upon you, Bill, in Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you, brother. Thank you. Give us a call after the program, uh, about 10 minutes afterwards, and, and we'll, we'll pray again corporately as well. God bless you, brother. I love his Scottish accent. Yeah. Oh. Do you know, there's precious people out there. We just, we, they need to be fed. Yes, yes. Feed my sheep, yes, yes, yes. Jesus said to the Peter. The is plenty, the reapers mm. are few. That's why you're an important reaper. Yeah. <laughs> Mavis, uh, good evening, Mavis. Welcome to the program. Yeah, good evening. And uh, please put your, your yeah, comment. Yeah, it's Mr. Uh, Mr. Awari. Yes. Um, God bless you. Thank you. And I know the latter day has come. Yes, you've got your sound up on your TV. And I'm so glad because something I every day crying about Christian and Muslim. And you know what God has done now? And he will continue to do it. He will pass through the Islamic to make a testimony, to testify the word of God so that we all will be get together in this earth here. Mm. All right, my sister, look, we'll we have to leave you there, but thank you very much for that. You know, it talks in scripture about that the, the Arab nations would actually come together and be one 
with uh, the right. Jewish people. I mean, this is a prophecy that's not being fulfilled. That's Isn't right. that amazing? What hope yeah, there it's is? It's amazing. There will be a, a, a road uh, all the way to Assyria, to Israel, mm -hmm. and uh, Syria will be his people, even, you know? Exactly. So God, they say, oh, yeah, well, you know, this is only a, a prejudiced religion that's only the Jews and the. And that's not true. You know, he wants everybody to be part of part of this. That's uh, it. That's God's heart, isn't God's it? God's heart, you know? exactly. Now, Philip from London, uh, we're getting very close to the end of the particular program, never mind the end of perhaps uh, what is happening in the world, but Philip, please put your question to us. Uh, hi, good evening, good evening. Uh, Walid. Ahlan wa salan. I'm Philip and I'm an Israeli living in London. I'd like to ask you a question. Um, us Israelis are trying very, very hard for peace at the moment. We're trying everything we can. We're trying to make peace with the Palestinians, we're trying to fight terror, but nothing seems to be working. What do you think that the Israeli people need to do in order to try and promote peace with the Palestinians? Very good question. In 1993, I ran into every single Israeli I could run into, Jewish, whatever, secular, right, left, and most of them said, you have to have hope regarding the Oslo Peace Accord. I said, do you think we're going to have peace from the Oslo Peace Accord? And they said, of course. I said, you're not going to have peace. They said, you're a pessimist. I said, I am practical. Peace comes through justice and truth. And they said, you're a pessimist, you're negative, and all these things. Now I ask the same question. I've asked it to thousands of Jewish people, thousands. And not one Jew has came to me and says, yes, the Oslo Peace Accord brought peace. So then I asked them again. I says, in 1993, most of you called me a pessimist. Why? Do you think I'd be wrong now if I said, giving land, giving Judea to your worst enemy, yes, Arafat and the Hamasist, will give you peace and many of them will say yes we have to do it and I say excuse me I'm gonna remind you again this is simply a stepping stone to your throat don't ever give up this land it's not an issue of land I know my people I know what I grew up with it's not an issue of land how can a Jew give up Judea a Jew Judea and English England can an English give up England for peace would you give up England your motherland for peace it doesn't make any sense. Well, particularly when it doesn't belong to you, it belongs to God, and God chooses whom he gives it to. And, Philip, uh, I have to say that, you know, from the scriptures, that when I read the, the Hebrew scriptures, which is what I started reading, I saw that when Israel made a covenant or an agreement with any of the surrounding nations throughout the, the you know, pre-Davidic period and all of that, there was all hell to play, and there was a price to pay. If you do it again and don't trust in the God, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as your deliverer, uh, and obviously then through your Messiah, you will also lose out. You cannot put it in the trust of uh, agreements that were made with men. Well, maybe if we all pray for peace. Amen. Well, that's the scripture, isn't it? And pray for peace of Jerusalem, yeah. which means pray for the soon coming of Mashiach, you know? Amen. 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 The Messiah should come soon. We should pray for peace, all of us together. Amen. Maybe that will, that maybe that will sway God. Amen. Well, thank you, Philip, uh, thank you. and uh, appreciate your comments tonight. You know, all of those, uh, hopefully, that we've been trying to get through and, and you know, just not going to get through on this particular occasion, uh, we hope that one day that uh, we'll be able to have Wally back, Wally Shui back, who is a Palestinian, uh, obviously ex-terrorist. Uh, if you haven't heard the whole story, please do tune in. It's a little bit more of an extended program than it was meant to be originally, uh, but there will be repeats through the night and obviously tomorrow. And uh, we thank you, Wally, for actually sharing this. Just some close comments here we've got about 30 seconds well anything we didn't answer we have our website abrahamic-faith.com abrahamic-faith.com look up walid shuibat and that's shu and abat together and we'll be glad to help out uh, we have material and things of that sort yeah okay uh thank you very much we have to be out of here good night god bless you stay in the word of god the bible because it brings life and light to us good night thank you walid thank you